What is up players, it's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Before the video gets underway properly, I just want to show you the finished product so you don't have to fast forward all the way to the end to see what your Imperial Guard Commissar is going to look like. This was a Herculean task for me to undertake because usually I do two videos. I do a first video that just gets the base coats and the washes down and then I jump to the second video where I do highlights and effects like the uh, dirt and mud on the Commissar's uh, uniform. But I think this time I really wanted to knock out the entire tutorial. So the purpose of it is that I want you to have a painting companion, a good buddy, a co-pilot at your side, at your painting desk, talking to you, having fun, hanging out, and just working. Because I remember I used to watch, what was it, those Beasts of War videos where that guy built a stampa and it was like, hours and hours long, I, I would just put that in the background and let that play while I was working. And I felt like I wasn't alone. I was working with somebody. We were both working to a, a complete finished model. And that's what I did here. I'm super proud of it. And I hope you have something that you wouldn't mind painting with me, with uh, Warboss Tay ha hanging out with you. And uh, let's just have some fun, guys. Now, if you would like to get an Imperial Guard Commissar, an Astra Militarum Commissar of your own, you don't have one, you can click the link down below in the description. I've been hunting through Amazon to find one, and I found this uh, product that's a little bit cheaper than I got mine for. So you can get it, and it's an affiliate link, which means that I would get a little bit of support for Warboss Tay Studios if you do click on it. So thank you for that. And hey guys, thanks for hanging out. If you want to join the Discord, we would love to have you over there. If you'd like to support Warboss Tay Studios, all you have to do is hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. All of that stuff pushes my videos up the algorithm and then uh, will help me get seen by more people. So thank you so much for joining me. A uh, special thanks to my patrons, Mr. Sprinkles, Mr. Secondaries, Picks, Dicey Guy, and Play It Painted. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now let's get on with the show. Put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. Excuse me! Pilot, are you licensed and registered for the Sentinel? I believe I am. Show me your paperwork, please. Mm-hmm. 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 Very well, everything seems to be in order. Pilot, what are your prime directives? Uphold the law, serve the Imperium. Be awesome. <laughs> Very well, carry on. Didn't quite remember the rest of that quote there. What is up, players? It is I, Commissar Brain. As you can see, a commissar's work is never done. So today I will be teaching you how to paint up my good friend here, Commissar Dwayne. Hello. You sound a lot like my good friend Igor. <coughs> Hello. That's more like it. Enjoy the tutorial, players. The darkness is all consuming. There is no hope in this far future of grim darkness. And yet, I feel colorless. I feel gray. I must be painted. But first, I must be primed. That's right, Commissar Duane. We're gonna prime you up with some Chaos Black Spray Primer. Now, black is the best for a Commissar, obviously, because let's say 80% of him is going to be this great black great coat that we're going to actually all right now that our model is primed in black what we're going to do is highlight up all of the black areas on the model so that's going to be his great coat as well as his chain sword his chain sword is going to have a black casing with the gold imperial eagle and then the silver bits for everything else with a little red power cord leading to his gauntlet just to give a pop of color but to paint the black we're going to use Skaven Blight Dinge and we're basically going to be following the trim the trim we're going to paint in yellow that's going to be a little bit later 
So because this is going to end up being like a dirty brownish black, I'm going to be replicating the look of, or trying to emulate the look of this great coat being uh, originally black, but having seen some action in the field, it's covered in a fine layer of dust. Like very, very fine. This commissar obviously takes pride in his appearance. So we want to just show that he's um, working really hard. And his great coat gets pretty dirty on the field. So I'm using diagonal strokes to feather this effect. And what it does is it creates a lot of individual paint strokes that fool the eye into believing there are uh, many more paint strokes than just what you see. It creates almost like an optical illusion. In fact, this one, if, if I had to write, <laughs> write a book, or maybe I'll do a YouTube video on it, one of my basic techniques that I use in all occasions is this diagonal brush stroke short feathered in so that kind of blends into the next one but this will be like valuable applicable in any painter's tool set uh, regardless of skill level right now I'm just going in for a second little application here here we go. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is pop up that color even more with storm vermin fur. And of course, my storm vermin fur is all dried up. Let's see if I can even salvage what's in here. Yeah, possibly, I'm gonna need to throw some Mixing ball. I have a mixing ball in here already. Ta da! Actually, I forgot to paint the casing of his chain sword here, so I'm just going to go in with the storm from and fur. Now there are two ways to do a hard line like this. You can either have the paint on the flat of your bristles and do this, which is just a straight forward stroke across the side. And then the sharp edge of the model is gonna catch the paint that's on the side of your brush. Or you could do this. I, I prefer to actually paint along the edge. And if you've got a model like Imperial Guard, Estra Militarum, where the, uh, the effect can be a little bit more uh, messy and uh, low tech, I guess would be the word, then this actually works okay. Then you see how it's a little bit splotchy. That's actually okay. If you wanna clean it up, if you don't like that look, then you can actually go back. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, let's say you tried this uh, painting technique and you thought, oh, it, it just looks a little too messy. I want my chainsaw to look clean. And what you're gonna do is take some Abaddon Black. Just get it right on the very tip of your brush. And you're gonna start at the center of the casing and then just push the paint out a little bit to the sides so that it cleans up that line. With this effect, you can go as thick or as thin as you want. See, so maybe now that it looks like the top of my chain sword could use a little bit of this 
tightening up. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint on, let's do the skin. Actually, before we even get to the skin, I got to do a little bit more uh, storm vermin fur around the black. So this is the second highlight that we're going with, and that means that uh, we want to really build up on the highlight we did before, but we don't want to cover it. So looking at what I've already painted, I'm already picking out the lines that I want to emphasize and enforce. Usually with the sharp areas that come down to a point or that create a prominent fold over. We're not painting completely over what we did. You can do some more of those diagonal strokes. Usually if you have a good first highlight already, so you're just building on that, and you can really pick out where you want this highlight to go. It's really going to look like the, the light is catching your model at just the right angle. I think I found my niche, you guys. I think my YouTube niche is really going to be uh, painting guides and tutorials for people who want to paint their miniatures, but you know, like you're not gonna expect to win a golden demon with these techniques. I think if I'm gonna give you a good base set of skills, little launching pad to uh, catapult your painting hobby to the next level if you wanted to, and then from there, then you're gonna. Go look at the Duncan Roads and all of the other <laughs> actual good um, painters out there. All right, let's do some skin. So we're going to start with Rack Art Flesh. I want to at least in this video get to the base coats. I wanted to do the, um, the, the great coat all the way because it's the most prominent of our model so now everything can build up on that the good thing about rack art flesh one of the reasons why i love it is it covers so well it's not it's not a complete replacement for deneb stone i still miss deneb stone as a uh, like the perfect foundation for pale skin. It's a, it's a pretty good, it's not, it's not a, like a one-to-one, -one, like I said, but it is, it's pretty good. Okay, the best part, the most fun part is the face here. So you really want to make sure you thin your paint and you spread it out on your, your wet palette. The last thing you want is your paint just slopping on the model here. No, uh, nothing fancy. No bionic eyes or anything like that. Just pretty plain and simple. Okay. While that dries, let's pop on the corn red. Oh, 
see. Look at that. Great. Any paintballs in here? No. This pot is wasted. Can I get in there? No, it is completely dried. On the inside. That's a shame. I've lost so many paints in this uh, move. Like packing everything up and moving it and then last summer not really doing any painting because I've had to take care of the baby. It, like so many of my paints that the air just snuck in. Sorry about that, folks. So we're just going to paint the, the corn red right on the front of his commissar's cap here. Try not to touch the uh, eagle too much. It's going to be a different color. And I don't think... We're touching the brim of his hat either. That's going to remain black. But that part. Perfect. And anything else we're going to paint in red? Looks like the... His cuff on the inside. I'm looking at the, um, the box here and I'm like, what is that color? We're going to use a Galvor back purple. So, but we're going to pop out this little wire here with red all right he's coming up next we're going to do while we still have time we're going to do a rhinox hide on the leather and the leather is going to be the belt the holster and um, the pouches on his on his waist. I was trying to see if like the if his boots, what color his boots are, but I think his boots are just uh, black, black leather like his coat. Okay, we got a grenade there on the back. We're just gonna leave that alone. We get his holster here, his pouches. the old uh, Commissar, Commissar Bane had these gold, uh, had this fringe here on his epaulets. I thought that was very fancy. Thank you. And even this, this old metal guy had the fringe on his great coat. But this guy is, he's bred for war. He's like, I don't need no fringe. I got my silver. All right, so let's get on to the silver then to create another nice little pop. We're gonna use lead belcher. And the silver is gonna be for a number of things. We'll actually start it with the chainsword teeth. Nice and easy. the casing here the little screw rivet thing at the end and then uh, let's check out his gauntlet yeah it looks like casing on the that part there, and then his gauntlet thing has like a little silver machine part there. And I think it looks like his whole gauntlet. Silver. Yep, both sides. And then the fringe or the trim is gonna be in gold. Breastplate. 
do it shoulder pads. Okay, if you look at the model, what I try to do is I try to paint everything as close as I can to the GW box art. I think that is uh, a lot of what people see when they when they uh, purchase a figure, they they, uh, they think about emulating the or copying the Games Workshop style and uh, color scheme. So that's kind of what I want to do with my videos: is help people achieve that. So the point of that story was that um, if you look on the box art here, he's got a red trim for his cap, but the lining of his coat collar is a different color. And uh, his cuff on the inside is that same color, that purplish red. So I'm gonna get to that in a second. I wanna just make sure I get all the silver bits first. And uh, we're talking about this grenade here on the back. His uh, back plate. Looks like I thinned it out too much. Get a little bit more paint. There we go. I'm pretty happy with it. I think this looks pretty, pretty good. Top buckle here. Just be very careful. He said as he smeared silver paint all over his belt. It's okay. We'll go right back over it. Okay, there we go. Next, we're going to hit that uh, the collar and the cuffs, and we're going to use Galvor back red. It's that nice reddish purple. I think this is it. I think this is the color for the collar, as well as the cuff here. Okay. Now getting it into the car is going to be a little bit tricky. So what I'm doing is I'm putting, pressing the point of my brush down onto the edge of his collar, and then I'm just pushing the bristles in, trying not to catch anything else. If it catches on his skin, that's okay. Got a little bit of his neck there. So let that dry, and then we'll see once we add the wash to it if that did anything. All right, then we're gonna use Retributor Armor. This is some of my favorite favorite paint for gold. I mean, before this was Baltazar gold and that was like my favorite gold paint. But I, I say that because back in the day, I used to have to um, paint all the gold areas with like Mornfang brown, a kind of brown paint so that the gold metallics, the shining gold, Games Workshop color would adhere to the surface. That was not fun because right now it's so easy. All you have to do is paint the color on now. Before you had to prep it with a non gold color that also matched the gold a little bit. Uh, what 
か<笑> When I was a new painter, looks like most of his、uh, armor pieces have gold trim. So we're just gonna take that and retribute our armor. Yeah, so like I was saying, the、um, retributor armor is really good because it's a nice yellow gold, which before was an impossible color to achieve. Like, if you ask me 10 years ago, how do you paint yellow gold? I would say,、uh, put away your brushes and go do something else with your time. It's not worth it. But not so easy. I think before for yellow gold, I would use like a Steel Legion drab, or I think it was called Graveyard Earth before as the base color. And oh man, memories. And then paint the shiny gold over it. Okay. So it's a little sloppy, it's a little messy, you know? And、uh, that all gets cleaned up. If you want, just go back with your previous color, in this case, Lead Belcher. And we're just going to do a really quick cleanup. Of the silver areas, they've got some gold on them, like the back of the casing of those. Gold pistol, a little bit of gold there. I like to start from the bottom up whenever I'm doing these cleanups, so I'll look at everything from the boots up the pants, then the arms. And then, oh, I missed the.、Um, Back plate there. I could do this cleanup work off camera, but I remember I always used to think whenever I would watch these painting guides, like, how did how did the guy paint that one thing? I wanted to be able to stop in the middle of a of a step to in order to、uh, check my work, check the technique that the guy was using. And a lot of times、um, they would just fast forward the Or they would just jump ahead, you know? So you'd miss it. Okay, I forgot the gold trim as well as the gold eagle on his hat. We're gonna knock that out. And then, seeing as we're getting pretty far into the time here, oops, sorry. I'm going to jump to some shades. There's nothing quite like. There's nothing quite like、um, seeing gold trim on silver armor. All right. He looks good. I'm glad I did the, the black on his coat. In fact, I think I'm going to highlight it up a little bit more just because it's such a great color. Let's see if I've got any Dawn stuff. I'm gonna use some Dawnstone as a, what I like to call the pop color. So, we're really gonna make this black great coat.、Uh, we're really gonna make all the edges and contours pop now, all the folds. So, what I'm really, really doing is getting the paint off of most of my brush, getting it right just on the tip of the bristle so that I can really lightly feather it. This is a little tricky. To gauge how much you need because until you get your brush going on the model, you're not gonna really be able to tell. There we go. 
go. I'm just going to drag it along the hat. Along the brim there. Picking up the folds in the sleeves and then working here on the back of the great coat. All right, that looks great. Uh, I realize I haven't really paid attention to the shoes or the boots, so I'm gonna hit it with some Skaven Blake Binge just to give it a little bit of some color. All right, let's hit the uh, face with some Raycon Plus Shade. Okay, put it on pretty thick. So as soon as it's in there, I'm gonna dry off my brush just a little bit and then I'm gonna pick off the excess by just dabbing my brush, picking up any of the pools of shade there. I'm also going to be hitting the hands. Now the silver, they want us to hit with known oil. You're also going to be getting that known oil just um, because it's touching the gold trim. You're also going to be getting it on the trim. So you don't want to go too, too hard and heavy with the known oil. Try to avoid hitting the gold as much as possible. Just get it to uh, fill in the sh shadows and the shading for the gold. But don't actually, if you can, don't get the don't get the known gold, <laughs> the known oil onto the gold. What I'm trying to say. You see how it immediately darkens that silver, gives it that natural shadow. We don't want that happening to the gold. We want the gold to remain as yellow as possible. All right. For the gold, we're actually gonna go back to our Raiklin Flesh Shade. And we're going to hit the known oil, or hit the gold, rather, on his hat. Give him a little bit more gold to his face, and then with the chain sword there, boom. And pull away the excess with your brush. There you have it. Not bad for part one of this video series. Actually, you know what? There we finish. Why don't we just keep going? We got nothing to do for the next however long the rest of this video is, right? Let's knock it out. So for the uh, leather, we're gonna build on that dried bark with some Gordor Brown.
Now, a lot of these colors are not, you know, they're not set in stone. You can find something pretty similar. This new range has a lot of very similar colors. That you don't need to be using exactly what I'm suggesting. Just finding the edges. Got on the back of his pistol there, that's okay. So you see how I painted pretty much like the whole belt there? Let me show you a trick. While that dries, I'm going to move on to the pop color for that highlight, which is going to be Bane Blade Brown. Nope. It's going to be Steel Legion Drab. Nope, it's going to be Talarn Sand. I'm not mad. All right, so because this is the pop highlight color, you really just get the paint just right on the very, very tip of your bristles. If you want to um, use your thumb or a piece of paper, your palette, whatever. I'm just going to trace the lines that we worked on before. Get that tie line sand right in the center of it. Yep, you don't want too much, but there needs to be something. If you can, draw the highlights down to the point. See, I didn't have the highlight in the center of the holster so much, but I have it here at the, at the point of the belt, the point of the holster. And you don't have to do too much. We're not looking for that color. We want it to just be a accent to the, to the darker browns underneath. And here on the back, okay, so we've let the Gorthor Brown dry for a second. Oh, I gotta clean up that known oil on the back plate. I'm gonna paint in the Talarn Sand highlights right there. And then I'm gonna go in with the original color, which is the Rhinox Hide. So you always check to make sure you get your, your washes out of those creases and crevasses or else they're gonna they're gonna dry and it's gonna look really thick and uh, oily all right uh what was that doing dryad bark or rhinox hide rather either or switch them out right rhinox hide has a little bit more reddish color to it but just look for a dark brown and we're just gonna take it and we're gonna swipe it across the center of the belt and that cleans up that thick uh, initial highlight. See those, when you paint too thick for a highlight, it'll feel like a mistake. And uh, that's totally fine because we're gonna go in each time with these uh, base colors and we're just gonna knock that highlight down. Perfect. All right, everything is looking good. Everything's drying. Uh, looking at my colors now, what I'm gonna do is hit the gold with some Auric armor. Mm, nope. I gotta like shake it really hard to get that 
gold pigmentation. See how like cloudy it look? It looks like orange juice. Ugh. Yeah. I think you just gotta keep working at it. You can see the like little veins of that gold color that we want underneath, but how to get there? Yeah, this looks like orange dreamsicle. Creamsicle. Okay, let's skip that. Let's head straight to the Liberator Gold. I swear. keep them because you know maybe I'll throw some paint pots in and uh maybe i'll get lucky all right so i actually got some skull crusher brass that's not totally totally dried out so uh we're gonna use that and now you might be wondering why don't i just go back to the uh, retributor armor and uh you could do that but I want there to be a pop in this color already. And while uh, Retributor Armor is a nice yellow gold to it, this uh, Runelord Brass has a little bit of a a different color that is uh, I think gonna look nicer like it's got more of a silver to it than yellow all right I think were there some areas that I hit by accident Yeah, I, I think I'll need to go in later and clean up after all. Have it on black. I'm going to try to do as much as I can on camera, but anything I don't miss just because I'm not holding the model where I normally would, like right up to my face, then uh, I'm missing a couple of things, I think. I'm just going in with Abaddon Black and I'm cleaning the lines where the armor plates uh, touch the greatcoat. You can see I've got a little bit of a bleed from the silver and the gold. So just cleaning that up. Then, yeah, I think I got some on my chainsword here. All right, I think the last thing we're gonna do, two, two more things. We're gonna use Evil Sun Scarlet on his hat. Beautiful. Now it's like every time there's a paint pot that I open that isn't all messed up, then I, I get very excited. What is this? Ooh. Right, right across. Nice, nice bright red. And uh, oh, we forgot to paint in the brim of his cap, his uh, gold eagle on his cap. So we'll take a little bit more of that brass scorpion. Yeah, that's gonna look real nice because we're gonna come back with a, a super bright silver highlight so we want to get a little bit of a color a little bit more of a gold color as a highlight 
Wild Rider Red as the final highlight for the hat. This is just going to be, we're going to try to do a, a line. Uh, it's not going to go down the center, but we're going to try to start from the top center and then drag it along the top where the red meets the black. On both sides here. I think I got a little bit onto the black area, but pretty happy with that. Just gonna fix, sorry about that, fix up that right there. It's looking pretty good. Okay, now his skin should be dry. We're gonna go in with some pallid witch flesh. You could also use flayed one flesh. But this will really just shoring up those pale skin tones. I like the idea of the commissars being so deathly uh, pale. They're almost like dark Eldar. They're almost inhuman. Like I don't think they should look healthy. I'm just gonna say they should be very gaunt. <laughs> That's a 40k joke. You wouldn't understand. No, I'm sure you would. I'm sure many of. If you're watching this video up till now, then uh, I'm sure you would understand that gaunt reference for this commissar. Okay. Look at look at that gruff, grumpy little guy. I try to go in because it looks like some of that rackard flesh. Uh, bled through a little bit. You can kind of see the black undercoat. So I'm just doing that feathering technique, but on a very, very small scale. And I'm not going to hit like his jawline so much. I'm going to work on his cheeks, his upper lip, cheeks on this side. And once I've pulled everything, sorry, once I pulled everything down, you can see I'm going to start on his chin. I'm just going to pull a little bit of color up his jawline. Or his, yeah, his jawline there. Not too much, just enough. That's it. And then we're going to do, we're not going to do full eyeballs because. I think the scale is just too small, but what we are going to do is we're going to take some Abaddon Black and we're just going to line his eyes where they should be. Paint in the brim of his head for a second. Okay, so this is going to be a little tricky, but I'm going to draw my uh, black paint to a point, just like this, drawing it right to a point. So if you just got just a little bit of black paint at the end, that might be too little. For this like really, really fine detail work, I like to uh, do it on my hand rather than on a wet palette. It just helps me to kind of gauge how much paint by how wet my hand is getting. All right, here we go. Finishing touch. Might have to hold it at funny angles just to get the just to get the line right. Yeah, squinty squinty. Alright. We're gonna do some quick base work. Let's use a what's the darker Skaven themed color we got Storm Vermin Fur. Or no, Skaven Blight Dinge. It's the darker one. And I'm gonna use this larger brush to just 
go to the base. I haven't decided yet how to base my uh, Acadians, but I'm going to add this guy to that group. So I might just skip this section because obviously if you're doing a Astro Militarum on a uh, on like an ice world or whatever, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be doing your basing the same as me. So uh, I'm going to just do a couple more colors just to build up here and then we'll cut it. I did notice what I like is that um, Games Workshop in their box art, they show that his, uh, the hem of his uh, gray coat and his boots are getting a little bit dirty. So why don't we, yeah, why don't we do that? I'll show you how, how I would replicate that. So you just get the lighter of the two Skaven colors, Storm Dragon Fur. And I'm going to add just a little bit of Talarn sand to that. This is going to be a super light dry brush. So I'm doing about, yeah, maybe two to one. So I'm going to refer to uh, Talarn sand. We're going to brush it across the base first. You want it super dry on your brush because we don't want it to clump up on his, on his uh, uniform. And it looks like the concoction is kind of kind of wet so get most of it off and then i'm just gonna brush the hem yeah it looks like if it gets uneven like if it looks like scratchy then you want to get back in there and just even out the bottom of the hem. There we go, that's pretty good. It looks like it's actually like more of a reddish brown, like a Mornfang brown. Yeah, and look, it goes all the way up. Whoa! All right, I'm up for a challenge. I'm up for a challenge. Why not? See what we got, Game Workshop. Let's do Steel Legion Drab. It's a little bit safer. I don't know though. That worn fine brown looks. That red looks really cool. Wasn't I looking for Steel Legion Drab earlier? Gosh. Okay. Oh, it's so cool. That's so cool. See, black by itself and the highlights for black, those gray highlights, boring. You add in some fun variations to it. It looks like it goes. These guys went up the up the great coat, almost like it's a like weathering. That is cool. Look at that one streak up the left. All right, guys. I mean, like, call me crazy, but I think that's a pretty cool effect. All right, so that's gonna call it here. Whew, what a what a journey we've been on together, guys. Commissar Dwayne. I have color now, and yet my heart remains black, filled with despair and hopelessness. And yet, the drip is real. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. 
Uh, check out the Discord if you want to join the Warbots Tate community. Awesome painters, many of them in the throes of the Summer Painting Challenge. Hey, I want to say thank you to my supporters, Mr. Sprinkle, Pix, Dicey Guy, Play It Painted, Mr. Secondaries. Thank you so much for supporting the studio. If you'd like to join them, the link is down below in the description. And again, if you would like to paint up a commissar of your own, I've got a link down below in the description. You can uh, replicate my paint scheme, get your own commissar Dwayne and uh, thanks for watching this channel and watching the video guys and leave a comment down below don't forget to subscribe hit the like button hit the um what's that the little bell icon ring -a ding ding so that you can always be alerted when Warboss Tay posts a new video thanks again for watching guys fall out